So good evening to everyone. Welcome in this presentation in the memory of Chanakale, a perspective of the past, present and the future. And it's a presentation dedicated to the battle of Chanakale and to the Albanian especially contribution to it. I'm Enrique Shinami, I'm musicologist from Tirana, Albania, and I live in France. Of course, Chanakale, it's a known history, but also unknown history. It is a war, it was part of the Gallipoli campaign, that was a military campaign in the First World War. that took place on Gallipoli Peninsula from February 1915 to January 1917. You know that the Entente powers, Britain, France and Russia, wanted to take control of the Turkish Straits. And this would expose, expose the Ottoman capital, Constantinople to bombardment by the Allied battleship and cut it from the Asian part of the empire and also open the road through the Black Sea to Russia ports. So this Gallipoli Straits is very important because it makes the links between Aegean Sea and Black Sea throughout the Sea of the Marmara. And the Chanakala is the small town which is the nearest place between the Asian part and the European part, just one mile, it's uh, between them. And this is a very, very ancient, let's say, place that was uh, not very far from the ancient Troia of the antique uh, mythology. And also Alexander the Great passes there and went to the Asia from Chanakala. In this war, on both sides participate different soldiers from several countries of the world. Among those who respond to, to the call to fight were the Balkan population, especially those who were part of the ancient Ottoman Empire. Albanians were among those who responded significantly to the call for this war. Despite the fact, the fact that more than 100 years have passed since this event took place, it is still present in the memory of Albanians. For what was said above, with this presentation, we want to point out how this war is perceived, speci specifically how it is presented in the press of the time, and how at the end it is preserved through the traditional music. So to understand better, I mean, the Balkan and especially Albanian participation, we have to to know that in this Gallipoli uh, Strait, uh, there were wars before Chanakala. In the left part of the screen, you see battleships that came from Italy from Venice in the 17th centuries that wanted to go for the Chanakala. And the link between Albanians in the Ottoman Empire, it's very old, but I'll start from a very important image, which is the road it is uh, the New York Times, very famous American magazine. And it wrote that the route from Don Bace Palace to Yildiz Palace was lined with troops in new uniforms, prom prominent among them between the Sultan bodyguard of Albanians and the Imperial Guard in new uniforms embroidered with black, white, and red, and having a waistband of Germany colors. This is in 18. 98, so 17 years before the war Chanakale. And at the time, the Sultan, Abdul Hamid Han, he had Albanian bodyguards and also Kurdish. So he wanted, you know, to, to do a link between, let's say, western part of the empire, Rumelia, and eastern part of the empire, East Anatolia. At that time, uh, the Balkan and Albania was part of the Ottoman Empire. And here you have a postcard, which is in the Exposition Universelle, the part of Paris. And Albania is depicted with the Ottoman flag at the time. At the time, the Balkans or Rumelia are called the Turkey of Europe, in French, la Turquie d'Europe. Until the, the fall of the Ottoman Empire of, in the Balkans in 1912. 
the part where Albina lives were divided in four vilayat, vilayat. When we start from the south, the most south one, which is the vilayat of Yanina. Yanina nowadays it's in North Greece, just in the border with South Albania. After it's the Manastir vilayat, which is in nowadays Southwest Macedonia and Southeast Albania uh, with the city of Manastir. Yes. Look, sorry for the uh, interruption. Now I can see the image, but before, uh, you know, in the previous slides, we couldn't see the image. I don't know why. But right now we can see this map. Now you can see Manastir? Uh, yes. All, all the images are very big. Therefore, uh, it is uh, loading very uh, fast, very low. Right? Yes, I see. So I will uh, skip to image before and, and speak after. Okay? Um, for instance, I cannot say anything right now. Do you see something? No. I can share screen if you need. Huh, right. Okay, great. I can see, we can see. Yes, thank you. So this is the Vilayat of Kosovo, which corresponds of Kosovo today. And also it is interesting, goes until the Novi Pazar or Yeni Pazar, which is a re region between Serbia and Montenegro today. It is part of this Vilayat of Kosovo. These maps are of uh, the Ottoman time. And the, the last vilayet is the village of Škoder, East Škoder, which is uh, North Albania today, and goes until Tirana, the capital of Albania. You can see? Yes. So at that time, we are in order to explain Chanakale, we have to explain the first Balkan War, which is very, very important because there is a link, direct link between, between the first Balkan War and Chanakale War. So in this image, you have the uniforms in the Balkan Wars. At the left part of the screen, the Ottoman army. At the right part, the Balkanic Alliance made from Bulgaria, Greece, Serbia, and Montenegro. We still can see, okay, right now. The picture sometimes. Yes. Showing, Maybe you should uh, press two times. Yes, come on. Yeah. So we are in the first Balkan War. Okay. And uh, I think you can see the screen. This map shows the how the first Balkan War started at the end of the 1920, 20, 1912, sorry. And you see that uh, part of the Rumelia, which is juridically the Euro Ottoman, was, I mean, invited by different Balkanic powers I mentioned before. And at that time, a lot of population of the Balkans, especially the Muslim population, went away. It was exposed. I mean, they were uh, in the tragic moments. So they were in, I mean, bombardment and very, very important disasters of the war. So most of them went to Turkey. And here you have the a Turkish family, which moved from the land was bombarded by Bulgarians. But at the time, you have to pay attention. When we say Turkey, most of the time, we are still in the millet, you know, organization. So Turks, most of the time, not every time, but most of the time means Muslim. So it is sometimes difficult to know if there were Turkish speakers or let's say Albanian or Slavic or Roma people. And the Muhajir, we are called this, this immigrations, they went from the Balkans often to the Selanik, Selanik port, and then from the ship they went to Turkey. Because the road of nowadays Macedonia and north of Greece, Macedonia of Greece and the north of Macedonia state had uh, already a railway, a railway that Ottoman built, and it was very important road to connect Balkan with uh, Ottoman part of the Asia. 
And when they went to Istanbul, they went in a very, very difficult and conditions. And they arrived with chariots, you know, what, whatever they had in their own. And people welcomed them in Istanbul as they could. You are seeing the pictures? No. Oh, no, yeah. So now I will speak about, you know, how the press of the time perceived the war, the, the first Balkan and second Balkan war. Uh, this is a uh, New York Times still, who said that the Serbian army left a trail of blood, thousands of men, women and children massacred in March to see, say Hungarian reports. Execution is a daily sport, terrible, atrocities, the result of deliberate policy to exterminate Muslims. We are in the 31 December 1912. And this is important because it's the new eve, you know, the, the last day of the year. And even this very important time of the year, New York Times, it's speaking about uh, the tragedy and the, the massacres of the Muslim in the Balkans. Also in the French press, I found important details. This is a Pet Le Petit Journal. It is a French magazine, which was very, very famous at the time. Imagine that this magazine sometimes did 1 million exemplars a day sold. Nowadays, I think no, <laughs> no newspaper in the world do a lot of uh, this number because, you know, at the time it was only the press. So this is the, it is in Skopje capital of North Macedonia. It's a warm ovation made by Serbian officers to a French general. And we are in 25 December, 1912. And this is the most important day in France because it's the day of, you know, Christmas. And even it's Christmas, they were very, let's say, aware of what's going in Balkan. Of course, they are showing their own history and their own, I mean, interest, of course. Also, the Petit Journal, the, the, the, the, the same press. But now, uh, three years later, two years and a half, during the Chanakala War, in, in March, 28 March 1915, he said that France is doing homage to the heroic Serbia. It is the Serbian day or La Journée Serbe in France, in French. So another picture from the Balkan. This is the war, the war in the Balkan. But actually, the year of the postcard is 1940, between 1914 and 1915. And at that time, the Balkan war was officially finished, of course. We were in First World War. And this is in Serbia. This is our French and Serbian artillery men together. So it shows also the alliance, very close alliance Serbian people had with French. This is the, the last, let's say, image or photograph of the time. It is in Albania and Kosovo. There are two pictures. It is called In Campaign with the Serbs. It's in French, but I, I translate it in English. In English, it said that French squadron of Serbia surprised by a heavy snowfall near Prizren, Prizren, South Kosovo today, in December 1915, huh? during the war of Chanakala. During the Serbian retreat from Albania, Biplan, surrounded by the main population of a village near which it has just landed. And to finish the press, I found very interesting uh, Albanian press of the time of the Chanakala war from Shkodra, from North Albania, who is saying, let's say, some technical details, but it's very important that press in Albania spoke about Chanakala. It was not completely, I mean, ignored. It was very difficult because Albania was a very new state, you know, from two years only and had no real press. But in this uh, press, they say that uh, we have know that we have, you know, English and British battleship 
who are going in the small Asia. And we have Telegram from Selani, so it's technical, but it's very, very important news from, from the time. Also, this one, same magazine from Škodra, 1915, he's saying that the English are doing a lot of, let's say, uh, casualties and the war is going on. We are in June. So it shows also how many people were, let's say, lost in, in the time, more than 6,000, etc. So, and the, the last one, still by the, the press of the time, it's, you know, it's speaking also for, for the time. And he's saying that... Sorry, we, we cannot see it. Can you try maybe moving it back and forth? I cannot do better, I'm sorry, but... No, no, now it's showing, yeah, it's okay. Yes, it's not very important to see, I mean, uh, do you see the, the tra translation in Turkish in Albania? Yeah, we do, yeah. Yes, this is the more important. I mean, this is our original documents. I'm telling the truth. I, so I'm saying just that our details, you know, our technical details. What I want to say, it's not, it's not the most important part of the presentation, but I, especially for Albanians, it's important to, to know that press of the time in Albania, I mean, spoke about the war. They did not ignore it. So the last point before we, we start, let's say, the presentation of the war, I'm not doing a presentation, you know, uh, professional of the war because I'm not professional historian. And if I start with historians, it will take hours. I did two weeks before presentation with Albanian historians. I will show after the YouTube link. It's very, very interesting. So this is a declaration of the war but uh, by a fatwa, fatwa that did the Sheikh Islam at the time, Mustafa Hayri Effendi, in 1950. They, hey, they called people to go to war in Chenakala. So we are starting just a little bit presentation of how war started. I mean, the day of the 18th March 1915 in Chanakale Strait, in Dadanele Sorry Strait. It's in, it's a, do you see the, the, the picture? Yes, we can. This is a French, you know, drown, dessin, we say in French, which shows that if you see carefully, the first battle, battleship are not British, are French. Because the French general asked to the British general to have, you know, the honor to go first. Uh, that's why, because for British and France at the time, it was, you know, a saint war. And I found in, even in British, you know, uh, magazine press at the time that it was a crazy, the last crazy, croisade, we say in French. So uh, they want to, you know, to, to take the honor who, who is going first, you know, to take this this part of the Ottoman uh, land, so uh, this is a uh, this is a true history. I mean, I, I found a lot of documents in French who who speak about this. So we are not uh, going to today's number of the battleship and name, but everything is documented, of course. So uh, at the time, you have to imagine that British, especially, but French also battleship had cannons with one ton bomb shell where the bullet traversed a distance of 25 kilometers in just five seconds. For the time, it's quite exactly the same speed as today we go to, you know, to the space with Ariane. <laughs> so it's incredible uh, uh, arm and uh, let's say bomb of the time. And here you have another image. It will come, I think, I hope, inshallah soon. This is in the battleship, the most important one of British, which is called Queen Elizabeth. And they are doing, I know, a church service under the cannon of, on board of this battleship before going, you know, to attack, to war. And Ottoman army, uh, of course, they was in trench, you know, ready to, to, to wait, but also they, they profit from some, let's say, currents coming from the agency towards the Sea of Marmara. So they put moving mines. And these mines were very, very effective and helped them, I mean, to, to destroy some, uh, some battleship. So now we'll go in the part, you know, more, let's say, Albanian participation and see how it is possible and how they did that. 
in the Balkans, they had some centers, you know, for recruiting. So one of them, the most important, one of the most important, of course, were in Njeni Pazar, nowadays Serbia, uh, in the Sanjak region. At that time, it was populated by Albanians mostly and Bosniak Muslims. But nowadays, unfortunately, Albanians were excluded, so very few Albanians live there, only Bosniak. And uh, at time, 15,000 Albanians and Bosniak, mostly from this region of Sanjak, I mentioned before, border between Serbia and Montenegro, went to Chanakale. And this is a picture of the time that shows how they were recruited, you know, in the center before going to the war. And here you have another picture, very unique, which shows the Tabor, you know, of prison, of Kosova. And from Kosova, eight battalion or Tabor formed with volunteers from Kosovo, and they took part in the Chanakada War. And here you have some, you know, tombs of the Shahid of the martyrs from, from Balkans. And you see cities very known from Albanian in Ushkup, Kosovo, Prizren, Škodra, Manastir, Bosnia, Ceranik. You have others of all the Albans, you know, cities, Prizren, Mitrovica, Shkup, etc. Yanina. Mashallah. Also from nowadays Albania, from Berat and Elbasan, which are in Vamos. central Albania. So this is a picture uh, from a Turkish painter, Mehmet Arel, and he did it, you know, to paint the Albanians during the Chanakale War, and it's very interesting. I don't know if you see the picture. Mashallah. They are with traditional dress, you know, and I'll speak later why and uh, explain the role of the ethnographic dress during the war. And also French, you know, press, L'Evenement, L'Evenement en français, l'Illustré, shows also Albanians in 20 November 15, so during the Chanakala war, with the traditional, you know, Albanian dress and the traditional hat, Chelesha, called so you have another picture from the Battle of Chanakala. I hope you'll see it, maybe it'll come right now. And this is very interesting because, as I said before, Albanians were dressed in traditional way. And you have to imagine during the war, you know, armies in Ottoman uh, uniforms came through the battle and they see people who are wearing traditional clothes. And it's very interesting how they can perceive them which are in the same army, but I mean, slightly different from them. I see this, you see the picture? Yes. yes. Yes. So this one is the last picture. After that, I'll speak about important topics, which is in Izmir, you know, Smyrna. And uh, this picture is made, you, you see this picture also? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. Yes, yes. This is made, you know, this is a professional studio picture. Huh? Uh, the stamp, you know, the stamp at the left, right of the screen is the stamp of oh, time of Chanakala in 1940, 1915. So we know that this soldier cannot be in other war other than Chanakala war. And these are Albanian soldiers in nowadays Izmir, Turkey. So here we have some documents, two documents. And this is our, you know, military certificate. Uh, and this one, the first one is very interesting. It's from Rifat Ismaili, from the village of Mushnikova in Kosovo today. And he was from Bosnian mother, but Albanian father. And he went to Chanakala with 50 people of his village. And with horse drawn carriage, they went. After the war, he did not return to Kosovo, but continued to fight in the Ottoman army on various fronts during the First World War. And Rifat Ismaili returned to Kosovo in 1924, nine years later after the war of Chanakala. His heroism was appreciated by Atatur, uh, and he was given a house and a farm in Western Thrace, where he could live with his family. And returning to his village nine years after the war, Rifat Ismaili failed to convince anyone that the gift given by Atatürk was real. People don't trust yet a gift, a very important farm, nine years after the war. You have another certificate here from another soldier. His name is Rustem Morina. 
He's from Mashmusha, near Prizren today. And he left for Turkey about 50 friends and joined the Ottoman army. Most of them went it in group, you know, because at the time you cannot go alone. It's a very, very hard condition to go. And during the war in Chanakala, he and his friends were in charge of the machine gun battery of the Ottoman army. And sometimes Rustam Efendi said that they were very hungry and for 25 days eat only grass. And you are, we are just three days, you know, before starting of the sacred month of Ramadan. And imagine these people are fighting, are fighting and they are eating for 25 days, quite the, the whole lunar month, Islamic uh, month, only grass. And the soldier Rustam Morina was captured by the Brit British in the war and sent to India as a prisoner. After staying there for three years and after the treaties were signed to hand over the prisoners of war, he returned to Turkey and after that he returned to Kosovo. Of the 50 friends volunteers who went to Çanakkale from the village of Mamusha, more than half of them, unfortunately, were martyred in the war. And Rustem Morina passed away in 76. You have also a picture. I hope you see this picture. You can, if one of them can see. Yeah, we can, we can see. This is a very, very new picture. You know, in this picture, you have four men with turban, the most old one, two of them having also Tespi. And these are also from the prison region, from a village in Dragash region. And when they went back from the war to Kosovo, they were the four survivor of 104 persons who went to Kosovo until Chanakala. And they were, you know, very, very, uh, they had very difficulties to say in the village that we are the only survivors. And they decided not to go to the village directly, but to, to, to go to prison force, to the city near the village. And every time, every four months, one of them would go to village and to say to the, you know, to the families that they will come, they will come. Hope inshallah one day they will come. So this was very, very, you know, uh, important history. And this is a unique photo showing them after the war, the only four survivors of this region of Kosovo. So now we have also the different part of the armies that are the minorities. I hope you see this picture of Indian troops of the British army. Yeah, we can. And this is interesting because I, I'm speaking especially about, let's say minorities soldier, because if you live, let's say in Turkey, you know, of course, Turkey arm, Turkish army, you see photos at the end of presentation, I will show photos, of course, of Turkish uh, participation, which are the majority, of course, but there are minorities, and I say in Albanian case, and all, not only Albania, of course, Bosniak and other Balkan people, but also from East Anatolia, they are, as I say, from Kurdish, from uh, uh, Arab also participation, uh, different multi-ethnic of course army but also in you know in western part indian troops were from uh, in british army with indian traditional turban and here you have senegali prisoners oh, in this picture in this postcard they say that in french the turkish prisoner on duty at dardanelles under the watchful eyes of the senegalese because the french army was was multi-ethnic and most of them came from africa from North Africa, from Maghreb today, so Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia, but also from Central Africa, Senegal, and Western Africa. And this is a photo, I mean, of the medal, African army of the colonial troops day. And you see a French, sorry, a French soldier, which is a traditional Arabic, you know, dressing turban of the time. And this one is very interesting. You have uh, in the peninsula of Gallipoli, you have the British army soldiers at the up of the screen. At the, at the, the, the bottom of the screen, you have the Ottoman caravans with camels who are leading towards the front of Gallipoli or of Chanakale war. And from now, I will speak a little bit less. I will put some pictures. I hope you see them, but if you don't see them, you have to be patient. I mean, five seconds. There are only 10 or 12 photos, very interesting photos, and with some music. And we are going towards the, the end of the presentation.
So sorry if you don't see pictures, but if someone can share the screen, yes, it would be nice because they are very important speakers. We, we can see the pictures now. You can see? Yes, we can. I don't know if you as you can, but I'll try. Say please if you cannot. I'm changing. So you can you cannot see pictures, but no problem. I go at the end of the presentation, and I'll speak about the song of Chanakala, which is the topic that I know the most. You know, I hope you see this slide. Yeah. It's the last slide of the presentation. So sorry for the technical problems, but maybe in the conversation we have after the presentation, we'll learn more things. So if you agree to finish, I'll just sing the in live, you know, with my traditional Albanian says the song of Chanakala, not the other song, of course, but let's say one part of the song. And I will stop share the screen. And I'm happy to see you <laughs> because during the presentation, I didn't see you. I'm sorry for the technical, you know, problems. I live in a village, you know, very, very far from city. So it's not the best internet connection of the world. <laughs> Oh, he may pass it. 
Thank you very much. And answer. If you can play with me, please, the, the team. One. Seven. Reya Hanım, Enris'e bir söyle de e, Muharrem abi de destek olsun Enris'e. Ay Enris şimdi zaten o da destek olsun. It's difficult to play together. I in Zoom never works. Sorry, it's you have a. Maşallah Enris, maşallah, maşallah. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for the presentation. So I agree uh, for the problem. I'm sorry. You are what number? If you can play, if you can play in SAS in Turkish version, please, Mohram Abi. Çamakkale içinde vurdular beni. Çamakkale içinde vurdular beni. Oy medeni mezara koydular beni. Of. Gençli meyva Ölmeden mezara Koyudular beni Of gençli meyva Çanakkale içinde aynalı çarşı Çanakkale içinde aynalı çarşı Ana ben gidiyorum düşmana karşı Of gençli meyva ama ben gidiyorum düşmana karşı Of gençli meyva Çanakkale İçinde bir kırık testi Çamakkale içinde bir kırık testi Analar babalar ümidin kesti Of gençli meyva Analar babalar ümidin kesti Oh gençli meyva Eyvallah Eyvallah, thank you very much. Çok teşekkür ederim. I wanted teşekkür. just to say something with your permissions. You see, this is, a, you know, the fact that two songs are quite similar. I mean, in the melodic structure, also in the rhythmic structure, and also the story they told is quite similar. Because, because, how it is possible? Because traditional music, and not folkloric music, traditional music, keeps the history alive. There are songs that 
tell about history, and it is the case, but there are also songs that did history, and it is also the case. Because some soldiers were also musicians with their sons, and the song, you know, was the meaning, the spiritual meaning that came from the heart to tell how they perceived, how they lived war. We cannot, none of us can imagine what was Chanakada war, because thanks to God, we, we were born after, you know, these wars. But people in Kosovo know what is war, because they lived similar things in Chanakada, even worse in some points of view. So my goal or my intention or my nia to do this presentation was that we have to be aware of our history. We have to know that in order that we cannot repeat anymore this tragic history, but we can learn a lot of things. One of the things that I want to say just before questions, if you use your permission, is that during the Ramazan of the year 1950, during the Chanakala war, Ramazan was in the most hot period of the, of the year, in July. So, you know, days were very, very long, 18, 19 hours, and they stayed without eating, without uh, drinking, because in the song, you know, they have some version. Someone can cut microphone, please. And I just, it's possible. And in the Albanian version of the song, they are saying that the water was poisoned. You know, the water, fontaine. So they cannot drink even water. And still the Muslim army in Ottoman, but also in French part, you saw French, you know, uh, Muslim who are taking war, they did the Ramadan fasting during the war. And sometimes one friend of me from Kosovo who went 10 times to the Chanakala Memorial, because you know, a British, uh, I, I didn't say that, but because I think everybody knows that British army was multi-ethnic. So Anzac Force from New Zealand, from Australia, from India, you saw Indian pictures were taking part. And also French army was multi-ethnic and also Ottoman. So, a friend of mine went to the old, very old tomb of the martyr of Chanakala. They built this tomb just after the war in 1950, not at all the new ones that are built from, you know, 10 or 15 years now. And he said to me that he saw a tomb, subhanAllah, this incredible story of a Turkish, I don't know, maybe Albania, but let's say Ottoman uh, soldier, Muslim of the Ottoman army. And just near him, he saw a, a tomb of a French Muslim. And they were just together. And he said to the people, you know, specialists, how is this possible? And he said, because, you know, Juma prayer, Friday prayer, as on prayer from the Ottoman time, and the Muslim of the of, of French army left the army and went to do namaz, to do prayer. And they killed them together. And that's why they are just near. So a lot of history like this take part in China Canada war that we don't know them because Unfortunately, nationalist point of view, even in Turkey or even in France or in Great Britain, in quite everywhere, missed our this history with all this, you know, nuance we say in French. And if you learn all of the things, we are starting to to to, to do it because it's impossible to to know everything. You can learn from each other, and you'll see how it was very very uh, unique. We say at the First World War, it was the most uh, incredible part of the First World War, the most tragic also one. And uh, tonight, we are not speaking about Chanakala. My intention is not to speak you about Chanakala. My intention is to commemorate Chanakala because it's Chanakala that unites us together tonight. It is the hack, you know, the truth that we as Albanian, I speak as Albanian, didn't give to this soldier who are martyred in this war that is uniting us to, to know more. So thank you very much. And if you have questions, please Urea or others, I'll be very happy to to do a modest point of view. Okay, thank you for this uh, great presentation. Especially I like the end of the presentation. You gave us really important messages. Thanks a lot. And I didn't know that, uh, you know, considering the multinationality of these armies from British, French, uh, you know, they were Muslims. Yes, uh, there, there, there were some Muslim groups and they were also uh, trying to pray or fast and 
it's still incredible. I mean, I, I have been taking these Turkish history courses since my childhood, but no one told me about this. So it was really important. Thanks a lot. Um, you. Okay, so uh, now the floor is open to your questions and comments, dear friends. Uh, thanks for coming uh, first. Uh, anyone would like to ask something or want to make a comment? More than one. Uh -huh. Süreyya Hanım, merhaba. Bir link, link gönderdim. Mehmet Akif Ersoy'un Arnavut asıllı olan uh, onun uh, Çanakkale şiirinin İngilizcesini gönderdim. Oradan bir bölüm, kısa bölüm Enris okuyabilir mi? Uh, tabii ki. So, uh, Enris Muharrem Bey sent a link about the poems of Çanakkale in English. Did you yes. see that link? Could you please read uh, a poem from that link? I mean, I had a poem that I, I, I, I show in the presentation. If you don't mind, because it's difficult for me to, to, to reach out and to see you, I prefer to see you. I would say just one thing, because I'm very happy Muharrem Abi spoke about Mehmet Akif Ersoy. He's from Kosovo, from Beya. His father was Albanian. And he, every Turkish knows it, of course, and not all in Turkish. And in his poem, one of the poems he did for Çanakkale, he said that this war, it is, he compared it with the Badr war, you know, in the time of the Prophet Muhammad. So, and he said that history cannot contain you. The martyrs of this war cannot be contained in history to give a very, very high level of what is was going on, on, on this war. So I will share you know, the poetry in English, and maybe you can share also in Turkish. But if you don't mind, I mean, for me, it's maybe not the most important thing, but it's very important that Mehmet Akif Ersoy did poem about Çanakkale. And for me, he expressed the most beautiful poetry that you can express because he compared with Bader and he said that history cannot contain this uh, war in Chanakala. Uh, I couldn't understand the part uh, where you mentioned that there were uh, people from the Northern Africa taking part in the France army, right? Yes. So we know that the African the Northern Africa is mostly uh, populated by Muslims. So uh, I want to know how does the, this feel that there were some mu Muslims on the, the front somehow, so they were fighting with each other. Uh, on, on one hand, there was the poem that you mentioned that uh, they compared this war with the war of Bedr, which is a holy war. And now we're talking like uh, Muslims fighting Muslims. It sounds weird to me. Do you have any yes, comment about that? Thank yes, you. thank you very much, Evina, for the question. Uh, we don't know the answer, of course, because it's very, very uh, knowledge, wisdom to have the answer. But we can start to, I mean, to meditate and to give some points to start the answer. And after, I would like my French uh, from Algeria friend, Sian, if after my saying he can open microphone and say in French how in Algeria because she did school in France but uh, also in Algeria I guess but the family Algeria, how they speak about this work it can be interesting to have the point of view of let's say one Algerian person for me for me it is uh, it is not a surprise because during the first world war uh, a lot of Muslims take part in the French uh, colonial army not only Chanakala, but everywhere in western part of the war, uh, in Germany trench between France and Germany, which is the, the most known part in U Europe of the battle of the First World War, we say in French, Bataille de Verdun. Well, Verdun is the Chanakala French, you know, with French, French. So and it was a very, very hard battle. And a lot of Muslim uh, take place also here in France in this part of the First World War. But for a long time, in France, they didn't speak, speak about that. From Jacques Chirac, I mean, from 20 or 25 years in France, they started to speak, and not only speak, but also building, you know, memorial for the Muslim soldiers in North France, in East France, and also media speaks. And also they did a very, very famous film. You know, Turkish has a very famous film of Çanakkale, and this film was subtitled also in France. 
But also France did a film, very, very important film, you know, gained a lot of prizes, who spoke about the contribution about the Muslim soldiers of the colonies uh, of the North Africa in France at the time. So it is a new, I mean, uh, history. I mean, from 20 years, we're starting to speak more and more about that. But before they didn't use to speak about it. How it was possible, to just to end the question, they, they were forced to, I mean, if Albanians went to Çanakkale volunteers and they are Albanian historians and Turkish historians that prove it, of course, maybe some person also went for some other reasons, but the most, most, most part of them were volunteers. But the African army, which is part of the French army, was not volunteer. They were regular soldier. I mean, you see, so this is very important. And these are historian, French historians who say that. Yeah. So I don't know if your, I, I, your question is okay or not. But no, no, it doesn't matter if it's uh, okay or not. It's just uh, wanted to, to analyze it. Um, so can we say that this war is quite nationalistic in a way? Like uh, it's about the lands rather than uh, religious one. I know that Albanians went there uh, because they thought it's their religious duty. It's a duty towards God. So I wonder how the, those Muslims in the uh, the other front thought, why yes. they differ so much with each other. Yes, I, I will uh, try, but uh, I just, yeah, if you can just say to us, please, if you can open your microphone, have you heard in Algeria or in France about this war? Say in French, uh, I'll translate, please. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, merci beaucoup, Henri Sefendi, for this uh, merveilleuse présentation. Uh, pour avoir fait mes études en fait en, en France, je ne connaissais pas du tout uh, ce, ce pan de, de l'histoire, uh, sachant que c'est quand même uh, très lié avec les, les deux guerres mondiales. Donc c'est vrai qu'en tous les cas, uh, en, en France, on n'en on parle, parle pas. Euh, je t'ai touché comme euh, Ervina sur, euh, sur euh, ce que vous avez raconté par rapport au, au fait que donc, les, les combattants musulmans euh, allaient prier ensemble pour euh, Jumoura. Et du coup, c'est très symbolique en fait que du coup, la religion continue de, de nous unir euh, malgré, malgré les guerres. Euh, mais c'est vrai que jusqu'en 1960, en fait, euh, l'Algérie euh, était colonisée par, euh, par la France. Donc, du coup, elle est obligée de combattre, en fait, euh, sous, sous le drapeau français. Il n'avait pas le, le choix, en fait, de, de refuser. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. So, she said the same thing that I said. I mean, she did the, the, his scolarization in France not in Algeria, but uh, they don't speak, of course, in France about this uh, participation of, let's say, Algerian soldiers. And uh, until he said a very important things, but I, I guess you, you know history, at least, I mean, on, until the 60s, Algeria was part of the French colonialist state. So they were obligé, say in France, you, they, they had to go, they had no, no, no chance to, not to go. So this is very important. And for asking for Ervina question, if uh, you don't mind, it's a very important question. Two weeks before, I did a debate with three of the mo most well-known Albanian listeners of this topic, and they analyzed it in very, very different point of view. And each of three gave, gave the same conclusion, I mean, in different point of view, that the main goal of the war was, was a religion goal. That's why I showed you, you know, the fatwa or the meaning of the meeting, sorry, of the Sheikh Ul Islam of the time. And people went there because as Mehmet Akifer so he compares it, it was a holy war for them. War. It was not at all, it was not at all nationalist war. Turkish, I mean, a point of view, and even France or British point of view presented as a nationalistic war. It is a, a big mistake. It's a great, the greatest mistake they did. But also in Turkish, thanks to God, from 20 years now, they are starting to see history different. And also Turkish historians say it. And they are now starting, I mean, to speak about the contribution of the different nationality 
of the Ottoman army. As we said at the beginning, 35, uh, uh, 30, uh, 35 uh, thousand soldiers went from Albanian origin. In total, Ottoman army was 350, 100, th th th 10 times more, you know. So one of the 10th of the, the, the, the army was Albanian. And they didn't speak in Turkey for a longer time. And now they are speaking, thanks to God. So it means that everyone, everyone, Albanians, Turkey, uh, France, Britain, for a long time see only their own interest and not the hack. I'm sorry, I have my cat who want to go out, so I just open the window for the cat. If you have another question, I will, again, uh, take part. This is a very important topic. I will speak later about this. If another question, please. Uh, and it's in fact, there was a correction from Ardam. Okay, while you are opening the door, let me read from Ardam. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. Yes, okay. I'm here. Did you see the message of Ardam? Because he would like to make a small correction. I, I, I don't read messages. If you can read the message, it's okay. very kind. Let me read it. I, I want to correct an information in Nisabi, Jihad Fatwa written by Sheikh Al Islam on uh, 11 November 1914, not yes, 1915. And it was announced to the public by Fatwa Emine Ali Haider Efendi, who was not the Sheikh Al Islam uh, in Fatih Mosque on November 14. So in that picture, it was Ali Haider Efendi, he says. Thank you very much. I, I, I'm, I beg my pardon. I'm sorry for the mistake. But I mean, the, the idea is the same. So thank you very much. It's very important to be very precise in every point. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. I'm sorry if I do mistakes. I'm not historian at all. I mean, I'm just a, a pure musician. So just to say a uh, last thing about the war, no, it was not at all a nationalistic war, but it was not for me, not even a war for the Devlet Osmania Aliyah. It's not a war for the Ottoman Empire. Of course it was war during the Ottoman Empire, during the most tragical hours of the Ottoman Empire. And you, ha you have the figure of the founder of the Turkish Republic. I didn't speak about it because I, I guess everyone knows Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, who also came from the Balkans from origin. but. For me, for me, and for some historians, it was even more than, you know, empire or Ottoman states, because Ottoman empire, it's not correct to say in Turkish, it means Ottoman state. I mean, if you turn this in, in, in, in English, it was not even, it was even more than Ottoman states. It was, I mean, for the soldiers, at least of the Ottoman army, some soldiers of the Ottoman army were not Muslim, <laughs> Subhanallah. some Jewish and some Greek, who lives in Turkey participate also. Why? Because they are Turkish, I mean, Ottoman citizens. They fought to defend also their land. And in Anzac, so in British and France, they have also some Jews in their part. So it was very, in our, our eyes, of modern eyes, we cannot understand Chanakada. We have to, to, to, to take a pair the whale, to open the whale. It's a spiritual war. It's not only war. I'm not speaking about history. I'm just pointing out history to learn which is behind history and which is trans history because things like this can be repeated. And of course, they repeat in cycles if you don't understand this. It was not at all a nationalistic war, but even not more for the empire of the Ottoman states. It was a war for the dignity. It was war for living or dying, as the song said. If someone comes at your house and in Kosovo is the case 20 years before and he wants to kill you, what are you doing? You say, thank you very much, you came here. But it is more than this because they went 2000 kilometers away from, uh, from a Balkan in a very, very difficult conditions. And sometimes historians said to me, people were working, you know, working in the field in traditional dress. And one said to them, it is war in Turkey. And he left everything and he went to work in the uniform he had. He didn't think to take money or to take something with him. We cannot even imagine nowadays what is happened at the time. Because from one century, everything changed. And thinking and doing war also. When I answer, I'm very no emotional because it's my character. I'll be not enough, we say. <laughs> I'm not enough. <laughs> it's a good enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
If you have other questions, please. Henry Sependi Yes. Oui, pour rebondir, c'est vrai que euh, aujourd'hui, on ne pourrait pas imaginer ça parce que chaque, euh, chaque armée était tellement composée de, de pays et d'origines totalement différentes que euh, chaque, euh, chaque groupe en fait, était en, en tenue euh, traditionnelle. Alors faut... pas, pas forcément, pas forcément, pas tous. Pas forcément, pas tous. Il n'y avait que les Albanais du côté ottoman, d'ailleurs. Oui, mais par exemple, pour les, les oui. Français, les Algériens, les, Français, oui. les, Algériens, les, Algériens, oui. avaient... les Indiens aussi, oui. oui. Voilà, oui. les tenues traditionnelles, alors qu'aujourd'hui, on ne pourrait pas imaginer ça. Euh, yes. She is saying very important thing. She say that uh, we see people in traditional dress, you know, Albanian or Algerian or Indian. And today, it's not the case. When you go to army, you take the uniform of the army, of course. So this is another very important point to mention about this war. Thank you very much. See, I'm very good. I couldn't understand what happened in the end of the war. So how did this war end somehow? Uh -huh. uh, we cannot explain everything because if you explain all, I mean, we don't do another presentation in the future. <laughs> so I hope uh, next year, Shala, from in March 22, uh -huh. I do another presentation of Chanakala. I will speak how it ended. If you have sabr, patient, because also the end is very, very spiritual and it's very incredible end. So we'll, we'll come, if you don't mind, with your permission. Thank you. Thank you. If Turkish also have questions, we have very good translation here. So we <laughs> would be very happy to hear. Allah razı olsun. MashaAllah, Aramızda e, e, Amerika'dan Pelin Hanım var. Araç kullanıyor ama birkaç kelime alalım ondan. Pelin Hanım'dan. <gülüyor> Amerika'dan. Muharrem. Well, Amerika'dan I'm Pelin sorry. Hanım. I have I have missed the uh, part of the presentation. Unfortunately. Heh, sesini duymuş olduk. Teşekkür ederim. Yes, Aramızda... you are driving. Wait, I'm so sorry. Please, please, please, please. I am I'm so sorry. I, I have been driving. I have missed the part of the presentation. Uh, we are doing a YouTube. Like... You I'll show you oh. the YouTube video after. Because you, okay. if you miss different sorry, it's difficult to understand all. I'm sorry. Be careful, please. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Yes, be careful. <laughs> yes, you're okay. Please we have the question of uh, of Sally. You have to look on your microphone. Osman var Osman. Süreya. Osman Bey var bak Türkiye'nin en doğusundan 1200 kilometre öteden İstanbul'a sizden daha uzakta. Osman ne diyor duygu ve düşüncelerini söyle Emre sen Müslüman kardeşlerimiz bunlar İngilizce, belki de. İngilizceyi konuşmayı bilmiyorum ama e, teşekkür Türkiye. ediyorum. E, sir, Çocuklar çeviriyor onu. E, sir thank you very much. E, I am in live Turkey e, live city Adıyaman e, İstanbul'da karım 1200 kilometre. Uh, 100 to 2000 kilometers uh, Adyaman uh, İstanbul uh, söyleyeceklerim bu kadar uh, thank you very much for everything uh, you are, you are welcome uh, in Adyaman <laughs> you are welcome in Paris also thank you it's very very very kind of you Thank you, Osman. Bus Osman, Bus Bus Osman, Bus Osman, Osman. Oh, plastic, Bus Osman. Thank you. Uh, I am uh, uh, thank you, sir, uh, Salih Güneş. Uh, I am working uh, plastic raw material production uh, fac factory. My factory, uh, my dad and brother uh, total uh, three people working. Ee, yönetici nedir bilmiyorum. Ne <gülüyor> yazar, <gülüyor> <gülüyor> <gülüyor> <gülüyor> Thank you, thank you very much. Da direct. I'm very happy that we have a multicultural session, and I'll be very honored if you have questions about the presentation. And because time is going on, so I don't want to waste your time. I mean, in Turkey it's even late than here, and here would be Akşam in I don't know, in soon in 15 minutes. Bir akşam zaten uygun zamanda ayarlayacaksınız. Salı veya Cuma Emrisi kardeşimi bizim 
üreten dostlar grubumuz var platformumuz. Muharrem'de bağlantıya geçeceğiz. E, Simultin anında tercümeyle inşallah e, işte Balkanlardan efendime söyleyeyim Avrupa'dan çalışmaları izleyeceğiz. Burada benim bizim üreten dostlar grubundan birçok kardeşimiz var. Üreten dostlar grubundan. E, sağ olsun teşekkür ediyorum. Ben mesela burada merak ediyorum. Sihem nereli? Sihem. Sihem. Okay. So let me uh, let me Not summarize nation. in English. Yes, yeah, please, please. We need a translation, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. So Salif Bey uh, would like to invite you uh, for a presentation in their group, uh, Üreten Dostlar grubu, uh, on uh, Tuesday or Friday uh, with Sabatayun's translation. And also, I, I think he would like you to speak uh, about Chanakkale War again with your presentation. And he was asking where Siham is from. I think from Algeria, if I'm yes. not wrong. Yes. Oh, Siham. Siham Aleyküm. Aleyküm Salam. Thank you very much. Salam. Uh, But I live in French. Sağ ol. Çok teşekkür ederim. Allah'a emanet. <laughs> Süreyya ben grup hakkında kısaca bir bilgi vereyim tamam mı? Grubumuz sınayi yani sanayi, fikir, zirai üretim yapan, üretmek isteyen insanların bir araya geldiği bir topluluktur. Burada hiçbir e, günlük politika dediğimiz politika, din, dil ayrımı olmadan e, önce Türkiye'de başladık. Şu anda da dünyanın her yerinden kardeşlerimiz bir araya geliyoruz. Ve bunlarla birlikte üretimler yapıyoruz. Grubumuz bir belli bir olgunluk seviyesine gelmeye başladı. Ve e, amacımız da buradaki gibi böyle e, homojen diyorum ben. Yani böyle her e, gönlü fikri e, ilahi kelimetullah davasından olan Allah'ın ismini yüceltme, hakkı hukuku yükseltme. Bu din değil ayırmadan diyoruz. Böyle insanlarla birlikte üretip e, amacımız şey e, dünyada diyoruz ya e, sürdürülen fakirlik değil, ortadan ortadan kaldırılmış fakir için fakirlik için mücadele ediyoruz. Üretmek, iş bulmak, iş kurmak, insanlara e, balık vermek yerine balık tutmayı öğreten bir grubuz. E, dünyanın her yerinden kardeşlerimiz gelebilir. E, ticari konularda evet. ve birçok konuda e, bizimle bağlantı kurarlarsa Türkiye ve dışından birbirimize destek oluruz. Zaten büyük bir Osmanlı coğrafyası var biliyorsunuz. Adriyatik'ten Çin denizine kadar. Aslında bize, yani biz öyle Türklüğün veya işte Arnavut şu bu falan çok meraklısı değiliz. Bize Türk diye Batılıların koyduğu isim bu. 15, 16. yüzyıldan itibaren bir takıntı bu. Salih abi ikişer cümle, ikişer cümle yaparsak çevirmeleri kolay olur. Böyle uzun zor oluyor anlayamıyorlar. Şuraya yağ özetlesin zaten. Tamam şuraya gözlerden öpüyorum. Eyvallah. Okay, thank you. Teşekkürler. So uh, he just give a brief information about the group. Uh, they basically came together uh, in the field of industry, agricultural, but their aim is to produce some opinions, some different uh, ideas. Uh, so instead of making some politics, they are trying to find the common ground between the people uh, and the people in the group are coming from different countries. Uh, so they are open to everyone in, in the world. Uh, so instead of sustainable poverty, their aim is to diminish and destroy poverty. So they try to teach a man how to fish. Uh, okay, so they are trying to uh, benefit from each other. And he was also uh, referring to how...